Hi everyone. Today I'm uh, with my friend Mel. Hi. We are above Mount Hotham, just above Lock Car Park. And uh, there's Mount Feathertop over there, Victoria's second highest mountain. We are doing a loop today called the Hut Loop. It um, goes around Mount Hotham and visits three of the historical huts around here. I've never done it before. Um, there's a little bit of snow around, so yeah, looking forward to it. Should be a good little workout. <laughs> so not even that far out of resort just yet. It's a bit different being up here out of season. Ski season starts pretty soon, so um, best time of year to, to do this hike is actually between November and mid-May. We're getting out just before it gets a little bit cold and, uh, and snowy. But there's yeah, already amazing views. We've only done probably a K or two. So it's a good idea when you're coming out for any adventures in the high country, just to make sure you're bringing the right gear, warm clothes, uh, some sort of shell for wind and wet. Uh, the weather can change at any time here and it can even snow in summer. Phone reception, although it's pretty good up here where we are now, um, can be a little bit patchy in spots. The end of autumn, a little bit of snow on the ground and beautiful sun on my back. So we're just at the junction uh, the Alpine walking track takes a little detour off here to get to Derek's hut. The Alpine walking track is something that I've always wanted to do. I think it's about 600 k's and it goes right across the Australian Alps. Bit of a bucket list. So they just got to Derek's hut uh, or the Charles Derek Memorial Hut. It was built by the Wangaratta Ski Club in 1967 as a stopover for day ski tours and it was named after uh, Charles Derrick who passed away in 1965 uh, while skiing from Mount Bogong to Mount Hotham. So all of these huts have the basic necessities to get firewood usually and um, often people leave a little bit of wood behind. If you're ever out here, for whatever reason you do need to use it, make sure you restock what you take cool seeing this little slice of history. Each little hut's got its own story, so I'm looking forward to checking out some of these other ones. We're just making our way across the ridge to Spargo's hut and uh, you can see Derek hut down the bottom and it's such a beautiful clear day. The views are amazing. If you're not getting out here regularly, I think you're a bit cray cray because this is magic. We're just outside Spargo's hut. This is one of the oldest intact uh, structures in the high country or in this area. And um, yeah, it was built in the early 1900s by Bill Spargo and his brother Cecil uh, for prospecting. Whoa! This has got to be one of my favourite huts in the high country. There's just so much character and it just feels like, you know, after they built it, they just picked up and left. Like, there's obviously signs of, signs of the times and different people coming in and, man, there's so much character in here and it feels like I'm in a museum. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, this is so cool. It's got soul. <laughs> It actually feels like you can sense the people that have been here. I was not expecting this. I was expecting just an empty shell, like a shelter. So one of the things that really impresses me and is that everything that's inside that hut, including all the materials that it was built with, was brought up here at some stage by somebody in a time when uh, transporting materials wasn't very easy. <laughs> I've wanted to show this for a while. A buff or one of these little neck, neck warmer things, they're usually a microfiber. Usually when I'm running, I carry one on my wrist and it ends up kind of being a, nap, uh, a hanky. Here's a couple of uses that I find really useful. First one when it's really windy is a balaclava. So pull it over your head, tuck it in. Tuck it in as a balaclava. You can chuck that on with your hood and protect yourself from the wind. Next one is just the classic single layer beanie, roll it into the back. 
And then the next one is the double A beanie. So fold it inside out, put a couple of twists in it, loop it over itself. Probably needs a bit more time to finesse it properly. But put it over itself, like so. And chuck it onto the beanie, which we probably didn't get that good. Anyway, a couple of different uses for these. I find them super handy and they're just easy to chuck in your bag and take them everywhere. So we're dropping down into the valley now from Spargo's hut, following a little spur line down. I'm glad we've got out to do this hike it's right at the very end of the uh, hiking season here at Hotham. Pencil this one in, put it in your calendar for spring. It'll be awesome once the uh, snow's melted and some of the wildflowers start popping out. So just crossing Swindler's Creek down at the bottom and uh, before we climb out, we've just got one last hut to visit, which uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing. So what do you think of this hike, Mel? I think if you're asking me at a time when we're walking up a steep hill, <laughs> it's awesome, it's so varied. It's actually really surprised me. The, the start of it was quite flat and just sort of meandering and I was like, oh, this is easy. And then we hit this bit, a bit more of a challenge, but the huts, I'm still not over. Spargo's, it gave me goosebumps. We're just outside the Silver Brumby hut or the second Silver Brumby hut. It was originally built in 1992 as part of a temporary film prop for the film, The Silver Brumby with Russell Crowe. And, uh, and it was rebuilt in 2006 as a replica. And so, um, yeah, if you're ever down this way, it's just at the bottom of one of the chairs up at Hotham. Um, it's definitely worth checking out. So we've just got a short walk out to Great Alpine Road and a short walk back. If you're ever out this way, definitely check out the hut loop. Dinner Plain has a lot of awesome hikes as well. The sun's just dipped down behind uh, uh, behind that ridge line. I don't know if it's gonna fit in it, but I thought I'd get it anyway, but it's amazing views. That's Mount Buffalo, beautiful sunset. We took a bit of a scenic detour on the way back um, to come down this first bit that we went down originally. There's Mount Feathertop in the background. It's a good reminder to uh, make sure you bring a head torch and you're always prepared. Um, I'm pretty good in the cold, but it is it is definitely cold up it's here. It's chilly. <laughs> <laughs> bring your gloves, bring your head torch. Yeah, and um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Oh, so good. Thank you, Stanley. All right, have a, uh, have a good week and we'll see you next week. Yeah.